Hey guys, today I'm finally going to get started on my 2056 engine build from the ground up. Now in this episode we'll focus on the right side of the case, which is the crank, the cam, and the distributor. I've never done this before, so it's definitely going to be interesting. Let's get started. So we're going to clean the engine, but the first thing I want to do is chase the studs down so I have an M8 uh, 1.25 pitch die here. And just be careful when you start this, so you don't want to cross thread it. There's a sharp cutters in there. That's what's chasing the threads, cleaning them out. So I'll just go all the way around the studs on the case here and just make sure everything is chased clean. And before I go any further, I'm just going to vacuum up all the residue. Then the other weapon in getting everything clean is air. I'm just going to start blowing stuff out. So much of engine building seems to be about cleaning. I don't even want to tell you how many hours I spent cleaning this case. I would have shot it, but I didn't want to bore you. Now I'm going to put the galley plugs in. Um, I had them tapped and I now have to put the plugs in there so the oil doesn't just pour out of the engine. Here are the plugs that are going to go into the holes that I had tapped. And I'm using some Loctite 565 to uh, seal the threads and make sure they don't back out. Though well, these are NPT uh, fittings, so they're slightly tapered. As they go in, they get tighter. So we'll just take a, a little bit of this. Doesn't need a lot. Get a finger tight for now. Now I'm just gonna tighten them up. Not crazy tight, but just tight. Now there's one other galley hole on the other half of the engine and plug that up. This one is a little more critical because it's really close to the flywheel. So we have to make sure that this goes in deep enough that it clears the flywheel. Once I'm together here, I may have to mill the top of it down a little bit, but we'll see. They sell kits with all of the gaskets and little bits and parts that you'll need to work on your engine. I bought this one uh, from Pelican. Victor Reitz makes it, obviously. And you can see it's got, here's the valve cover gaskets. You can see that the pushrod tube seals are in there, the exhaust gaskets, um, and a bunch of other parts, the oil cooler seals. It's, uh, it's a pretty handy kit. These are the through bolts that go through the case, and I'm going to uh, chase the threads on these as well. The kit comes with these little uh, bolt retention pieces that kind of just snap on over the shaft of the through bolts. But what I'm gonna do is put one in, and you'll see it kind of just clips around it, and then push it down a little bit, it holds the bolt in place. And I'll do this for all six through bolts. I'll also make sure that there's a washer on this side before you put it in. I'm gonna clean all of the seats and where the bearings go, just to be absolutely sure. Okay, here's a really important part of the engine. These are the pins that hold the bearings in place, or at least index them. So there are four that go into this side of the case, and the pins go into these holes right at the bottom here. Sometimes you have to press them in a little bit to make sure that they're completely seated. Clean the bearing with some carb cleaner. So you see that there's a, a relief there for the locating pin here. And this relief is always towards the back. This side is always towards the flywheel. So the, uh, the location of the pin relative to the edge of the bearing, it's always back towards the flywheel. So what we'll do is we'll line this up and then we'll pop it in and make sure that the oil holes line up. This should be a tight fit, and it is. 
it's even here and here and just looking at the oil hole it looks even as well to make sure that there's no blockage there I want to make sure that I see no daylight between the bearing and the case now this is the bearing that's going to go over the front near the front main seal so I'm going to put that in here you can see where the pin is going to line up and get it pretty close okay I feel that it's on there and now what I'm going to do is provide a reference mark so that when I go to put the crank in I know where to slide this bearing so what I'll do is I'll use a, a just a scrape here and when I pull this out you can see that there's a mark there and I'll be able to easily line it back up when I put things back in and I'll do the same thing for the uh, bearing that goes into the rear again here's the locator so that goes to, towards the flywheel so that it works with that and there's a thrust surface here which is going to make this bearing harder to put in for sure but and get it kind of in the ballpark lining up the oil hole and then pushing it down and just checking also just eyeballing here that the uh, oil hole does not look obstructed at all now I'll put a scratch mark on this side and here's the crankshaft back from the machine shop he wrapped it in plastic to keep it clean keep dirt from getting in there I had him polish it I had him balance all the rods check everything out um, he reassembled the crank here uh, torqued everything down it's got the new bearing on it of course because the uh, case was a line board got the marking here that shows that the locator pin is towards the flywheel side so now all I have to do is put the bearings on the back this is where the thrust bearing is going to go and on the front and then we'll drop it into the case so here I've got the new bearings and these are the ones that I've made the marks on so we'll clean them up and then put them on using the carb cleaner here and then air to just dry it off. Then what I'm going to do is uh, take some oil and put some a generous amount on I make sure I don't feel anything or hear anything weird in there so it seems good and now um, we'll do the same thing for the rear bearing And then once again, with the pin towards the back, set this up here. Make sure that it feels smooth as it's going through, which it does. Now, as I said, I didn't do the rod work. I took it to a machine shop. But a couple things to note. Um, each rod, there's a cap and then the rod itself. And you notice that uh, they have the same number stamped on both sides really important that they match. If you like my videos, please subscribe. Totally free in case you didn't know. And there's so many more videos coming. That's the best way for you to know when a new one posts. Just click the subscribe link and you'll get a notification. Also shoot some in the holes here. All right. I'm holding the crank by the one and two. I'm just going to place it in here. And I don't Get this located and then push it in. Got this one located, it's set right. And I check my score mark, and it's right on the line there, right on the money. You can see that the locating pin's coming around here, and there's a scratch mark. I'll get it into the ballpark. Okay, I want to make sure that my other bearings have not become unseated. Okay, I've got this all the way down. You can see that there's no daylight here and it's even all the way around. And all the other bearings are firm, not going anywhere. So it's important you get this in 
right the first time because when you close the two case apps together, if the bearings aren't set right, you'll ruin the bearing. We'll have to take it apart and do it all over again. So now we'll come to the other side of the engine and we'll get the cam bearings in place. Now it's the same deal. We're going to spray some carb cleaner in here, get the bearing nice and clean. Then we'll start placing the cam bearings. This one has thrust surfaces on it. And that one goes in the front. I'm just going to press it in, get it even. And you'll see that um, this middle one has a tang on this side. Um, which corresponds with the bearing that has the tang on that side. So it's kind of impossible to mix these up. Rock it back until the tang fits in the hole. And just press it in, get it even. So here we have the cam gear. I put it in a vise with some rubber on either side to make sure that I didn't damage anything. Um, the indexing dot is right here at 12 o'clock. And I want to do that because it'll make it easier for me to align the cam when I put it back in here. Here's the new camshaft, freshly taken out of the plastic. And what we want to have is the, uh, the rear lobe, the number one lobe, pointing straight down 6 o'clock to align with 12 o'clock here. So we'll get this in. I'm going to spray in here. A little brake cleaner just to make sure that these holes are absolutely clean and dry. I'll blow them out with some air as well. So these are the bolts that come with the webcam cam. Um, they do not have star washers, but that's okay because I'll be using red Loctite. And they're um, a hex, they're a hex bolt that's 3 16 so it'll be the only non-metric thing on the car. Make sure you have a 3 16 uh, socket here. We're going to torque them to uh, 14 foot-pounds eventually. All right, so I'll put a little red Loctite around this. Get it started in here. Now you notice that there is a recess all the way around here. Um, that's to give a little bit more clearance between the top of this bolt here and the oil pump. Now since this one had a hard time going in, I'm just gonna try to pull the gear and the cam together with these other bolts and then hopefully everything will just line up. Yep. Now let's get the torque wrench out and set these to 14 foot-pounds. So here's my uh, digital torque wrench set to 14 foot-pounds. Just go around crisscross pattern. Let's get in there. Make sure this is all the way in. You do not want to strip these. Okay, we're good there. And in preparation for the cam going in, I'm just going to put a generous amount of oil in here. Now this is the assembly grease that came with the webcam. No need to uh, be sparing about this. Just want to generously coat it. We'll help in the break-in. Now I learned most of what I'm doing here from Jake Raby's Engine Build DVD, which is an absolute must if you're going to tackle something like this. Also a shout out to Mark Henry, who is another legendary Type 4 builder, who is really generous with his time and advice and I needed a lot of it. So you see these two dots here? That's how we're gonna index the cam. The cam dot is gonna fit in between those two dots. There's the dot. So what we're gonna do is just kind of place it in here and then just let the gear roll down into place. Okay, now everything's in. I'm going to take the uh, fan hub, just put that on to give myself a little leverage to spin the engine, make sure that it spins freely, which it does. 
trying to hold the rods here so they don't fall onto the cam. But things seem to be moving nice. There's no binding. Great. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to get this number one cylinder, this rod, to top dead center so that we can index the distributor drive gear. Now I spun the crank around before to make sure that everything was rolling smoothly. So what I'll do is bring it back to the point where the dots align, which is another good safety check. And then I'll just continue on a little bit more until the beefy part of the crank here for number one is pointing straight up and so is the rod when you hold it, of course. When number one is the top dead center, the indexing pin will be at six o'clock on this part of the case here. And you can actually cross-reference that against the flywheel, which will show the notch pointing this direction when the indexing pin is in that place. Also, another way to check is by looking at the lobes on the camshaft here. You can see that we're dead flat on the number one cylinder, which means both valves will be closed. We're at top dead center here. Don't be surprised if you find yourself doing these processes over and over again until it all works. I know I did. Engine building is really about test fitting, test fitting, test fitting, and cleaning. Okay, now it's time to index the distributor drive gear. And you see this washer here that can kind of fall off as you're putting it in. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just put a little of this engine assembly grease that will melt with, uh, with oil in there and put it back and that grease will act a little bit like a glue. So now we need to make sure that the distributor is pointing at the number one lead. Now this thing spins, so how can you tell? Well this one actually has a little mark on it already, but if it didn't, what you do is just uh, put the cap on and the cap is indexed. It has a piece here that kind of fits within, it only goes one way goes in like that and then you've put the cap on you can tell that this is the number one lead and the mark is directly beneath that so you could put your own mark there if you want so we're going to angle the rotor to point exactly in that spot and then we'll put the drive gear on put it in because we know the engine's already at top dead center on number one a little motor oil never hurt anybody Make sure the distributor is pointing, the lead is pointing to the right place, which it is. Now we'll just push this in. We need to make sure that the bracket is aligned also, so that as we push it in, it'll go over the little thing. And this O-ring here is a little bit difficult to get past. It's got to work it gently. So it'll pop like it just did. Align the distributor there, and it's actually already in. That was easy. Proof that it's in is that when we turn the crank, you can see the rotor doing its thing. Okay, now all we have to do is secure the distributor with this nut, and we're pretty much set with the right side of the case. In the next episode, we'll focus on the left side. We'll seal the case house together and finish the short block. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. Be safe and enjoy the addiction.